So Noble Research Institute, we are a nonprofit organization. We are a private organization. You know, we were set up by a founder back in 1945. We've got about 300 employees. We do research. We do similar to what, we, what you know, university systems would call extension work. Our mission statement is uh, to deliver solutions to great agricultural challenges. I've been at the Noble Research Institute for 10 years now. I didn't start doing any pig research until 10 years ago when I moved to the Noble Foundation. The reason I started doing pig research is when I moved to that part of the world. I saw the devastating effects of wild pigs on, on landowners' properties. I saw landowners having to replant peanuts. Same thing with other cropland and a lot of people in that part of the world in southern Oklahoma like to feed their deer and you know they're hunting enthusiasts. They love watching deer come to the deer feeders and Pigs are tearing up feed pens, or tearing up fences, you name it. So the landowners had a problem and we wanted to help. My dad is 77 years old. He's been retired for about almost 20 years now. And uh, he's had some health issues, but he still loves the outdoors. He traps the conventional way and he consistently catches some hogs off of our property. If you look at this trap right here, use hog panels and T-posts. It's a typical homemade hog trap, and it does catch hogs. But the, yeah. the, the disadvantage to it is, is you, try to, you have to try to get the hogs coming to it because it's not mobile. He would catch partial groups. He would catch one, two, sometimes five, and he has caught as many as six or eight, but he wouldn't catch them all. And so what we were doing in that process, even though we were keeping the population from expanding more than it would have, it was still expanding, and we were educating the hogs as well, and uh, a lot of the older ones would come around the trap, but they wouldn't go in the trap. Like that, and put your foot on it. Take the trigger, this is where the trigger is made. It's easy to push, and when you push it, it's set. Now the disadvantage to this trap is you can have one hog to come in here and trip it and you can have 15 on the outside. It's tied to this box right here and I pour corn if I got a bucket of corn over that box. Three years ago I caught 100, last year I caught 80, and this year I've caught around 60 this year. He is still trapping with the uh, old style and, and will continue to do that. But uh, he's pretty amazed by this boar buster trap the first time he saw it and the technology and, and how it was catching all the hogs. So he's still going out every day and having a ball doing it. Kind of the biggest question we were receiving at the time, you know, people were using a lot of the conventional traps and they were having trap shy issues. Uh, pigs weren't going inside the traps and so that was our question at hand. And we uh, spent about five years um, in research to develop Boar Buster. My name is Doug Eister and I'm CEO of WW Livestock Systems. Noble was interested in finding a manufacturing facility that uh, could mass produce the uh, Boar Buster trap system. And they granted us an exclusive right to uh, manufacture the trap in the United States. We want to be able to provide that trap to address the huge problem that these feral hogs are causing. It's a completely suspended structure. Pigs don't associate that overhead canopy with any danger. It's like walking underneath another fence line or a tree. It kind of removes the anxiousness of the pigs to come in it from every single angle. You're going to have multiple really high quality cameras. You can, from your phone, be able to uh, watch those pigs live so that you know exactly what you're catching and be able to deploy the trap remotely and catch the whole sounder. We started uh, back in January with these bull buster traps. We had been using the conventional type on our property and we were, we were catching hogs, but the population was still gaining. So we heard about these traps, decided to try one. We put it out here on our place 
and instantly after the first night we knew we, we were on to something. Since January the 1st, I'm not sure the exact number, but I think we've caught over 300 and that's just been in my spare time and we've definitely made an impact on our property. What really is good with it is I have got my neighboring landowners involved in the process because just catching them off my place, they were still coming in from other areas. So now we've got them involved and one of my friends is purchasing a boar buster trap as we speak. We established a location where pigs were using. Um, you know, we've got a nice uh, millet field down there at the bottom of the hill that pigs were really rooting up when it was corn and other crops in years past. And so, found a good location, trained pigs to a bait source over the last week. Um, now that pigs are trained to a bait source, they're going to be much more apt to walk inside of a trap. It's two different groups, mm -hmm. at least, and it's probably. 75 to 100 pigs. Wow. So I think it's, it's probably three groups. Yeah. Well, let's so, get her set up. All right. In the assembly of the boar buster trap, there's uh, 12 panels and there's three legs. If a producer buys a trap, it'll come with a little bit of extra assembly, like putting poly rollers on the trap. It'll come with uh, a winch that needs to be placed on a winch stand. But from a user's perspective, once they use the trap one time, the movement of that trap to another location becomes very easy because a lot of this stuff is already pre-assembled. This is the part that that will raise up to make the trap fall. There are markets for wild pigs, so you can sell them to slaughter facilities. You gotta take them there alive so that the USDA inspectors can take care of their business. Um, but that's what that's for, to load pigs into trailers. To join Gamekeepers, visit GamekeepersClub.com or pick up a magazine at Tractor Supply, Walmart, or Bass Pro Shops. This is the safety chain. I encourage everybody Make sure you use the safety chain when you're working in and around the trap or baiting. We haven't had a failure yet, but we don't want to either. It, the camera communicates with this box and it sends a signal to this gray box for the trap to drop when we're ready. This is our Color HD. Uh, it's on a Verizon option, and uh, you can get it in AT&T if you choose to. During the daylight hours, this camera is color. At night, it is uh, black and white because it does run off of infrared lighting. We set that camera up so that we can view that stream tonight. What will happen is when animals are detected in front of that camera, we'll get a text message to let us know there's something there. If it's deer, we'll hit the snooze button and go back to sleep. But if it's hogs, we'll log on, watch a real-time live video stream, what's going on at the trap site. So we'll wait for all those pigs to get inside the trap before we hit the deploy button uh, right there from the comfort of the lodge. And hopefully tomorrow morning we'll be out to check on what we caught. Feral pigs cause enormous damage for farmers and ranchers in the southern Great Plains. There's statistics that show $1.5 billion in agriculture related damages every year. They are wrecking havoc on native ecosystems, water quality, soil erosion. The disease potential transmission is real in terms of uh, to our domestic livestock as well as native wildlife uh, as well as humans. Feral pigs are the most highly reproductive large mammal in North America. They can breed at the ripe young age of 
six to eight months. They can have up to 15 piglets in a litter. I mean, they can have up to two litters in a year. So you can see how the population gets out of control very, very rapidly. Fish and head down here and unload this hog trap, man. Got, how many we got in there? I don't know. It's a dozen plus, and if we can go down there and get them out, I was too lazy to get up out of bed last night. Clean the trap out, bait her back up, get ready do for it again her. tonight. Do it again tonight. Yeah, that way I can sleep again. <laughs> That's 17 hogs. I don't, we'll see how many males and how many females we got. And all these females will be producing in about four or five months. So we can do a little math and see how many we really got rid of. But it'll, it'll knock a dent. It'll help. Whether they're big ones or little ones, I mean, anytime you take a mouth out, right. you're saving. Right. And we just took 17 in a year's time. We probably just probably accumulated for over 100. Well over in, 100. In a year's time, just this one, one group. Yeah. I don't tell about things that I don't believe in, but I've used every kind of trap and different cameras, and definitely this is the best system that's out there that I've seen, and I think I've seen them all. Yesterday we moved a trap from one of Rodney's properties to another one of his uh, locations that he had, had pigs baited at, and Rodney's big on, he, he does it right. You know, Rodney is big on getting pigs trained to a location before moving a trap. Fixing to move this boar buster on a different place on our property. We've been baiting for about two or three weeks. We got the hogs coming in. They're coming in every night, so we're hoping to catch a bunch tonight, maybe two or three nights in a row. Try to keep three or four sites baited ahead so that we can move the trap from one place to another and always have a chance of catching hogs. In combination with the trap and the camera system, one of the key factors that we found to make us successful in catching large numbers and all of the hogs on a property is the pre-baiting. What we've learned is if you'll go ahead and put plenty of feed out there so that they can actually get, a, I call it a full meal, uh, and you do that consistently, success is basically guaranteed. They're eating about 150 pounds a night now. I don't know how many sounders it is, but it's quite a few. We expect to catch a bunch tonight, and hopefully for the next two or three days, we'll thin out the herd up here so that they won't do it as much damage. Right now, we try to drive across this field, it's hole after hole after hole, so we're gonna work on them. They've been working on us, we're gonna work on them for a while. We're gonna need another battery. Our Boar Buster standard camera, it operates on AT&T 3G signal. You've scouted for pigs, take the time to scout for signal. Make sure that you have good, adequate signal to operate your trap efficiently and drop the trap when you're ready to drop it. Before, we were catching two and three and on a really good catch, five or six. And I have people to ask me now, how many do you catch? And the simple answer is we catch them all. If there's five that come in, we catch all five. If there's 25 that come in, we catch all 25. Whenever this trap's dropped, to reset it, all it is is take this, hook it down at the bottom on this red ring, Went you back up just like you just saw me do. So in a matter of you know, 15, 30 seconds, you can have it cranked back up and ready to catch more pigs. It's about nine o'clock. We set the trap this afternoon, right, right before dark. We've already got our first catch in there for the night. He's 77, still going strong. Oh yeah, here he comes. Here he you ready? Yeah. All right, let's go get him. Let's see, we got uh, 
two, four, we got six, we got a sow and five, five little ones. One thing I would really want to reiterate with everybody and make sure that they understand that pigs and hogs are a nuisance. If you have them on your property, over time, you will regret it and you wish you didn't have them. If you have an opportunity to get rid of them, they're not native to here, they're not supposed to be here. When they tear up everything you've got, your food plots. We even planted trees and came back about a week later and there were none left. Once we get through catching these large numbers, because after a while, hopefully we'll have them all down to a certain manageable number, that trap will be out and it'll be trapping on my property. 24-7, 365 days a year. And I'll still catch those few. And if it's only one, I want to catch it. I don't want any of them on my property. You get the hogs, you get them out real easy. 30 seconds, 40 seconds, you've got the thing reset. Go back home, before daylight. Hopefully we'll have another catch in here. It's the best thing since cornbread. two types of landowners, ones that have feral pigs and ones that are about to have feral pigs. The best advice I can give to a landowner incurring damage from feral hogs is get on them early. Don't wait until the damage is so severe that you really have to do something. It's going to be some work involved in it and once you get those numbers starting to decline, you need to put your foot on the gas and, and really get after them and not slack up because they can re reproduce so fast. We are committed. We're not going to slack up. We're not going to give up. We're going to keep the numbers so low that they're not going to have much of an impact on our property again. As long as producers are using the right protocols, they're baiting locations, they're setting traps up, they're baiting those pigs into the traps before they actually set the triggers on those traps to catch those animals, they can be successful at catching pigs.